So you mentioned this has been in the works for a while. Why don't we kind of back up a little bit then? Um, let's tell the guys what this is and then maybe describe where it came from. Maybe the two will go together because it sounds like there's a little bit of a story there, the backstory on it. So let's hear more about that. Yeah, totally. Um, well, if people are familiar with stuff I have released before, uh, you know, I'm, I really like indexes um, or, or card gimmicks where there's multiple outs built in. Um, and then in order to get even more outs built in, I, my brain immediately jumped to like, uh, once I tackled, how do I fit as many outs into a piece of paper as possible? Then my brain jumped to, well, how do I fit, uh, multiple things into something? And what is that thing that's holding them in the envelope, uh, was where I went to next. And so this is an envelope to answer your question. This is an envelope that has, uh, four different outs built in and the main thing that i'm proud of is that the spectator gets to remove the out uh, i've seen and used a lot of different multiple out devices before and uh really good ones and yep. the best ones the magician still removes the out um, and so i was really obsessed with tackling that problem and uh having all of the four outs be handled the same way so you didn't have like one out that was slightly less impressive than the others. Um, so this is what the envelope looks like. Uh, it's just slightly bigger than a playing card, um, but it doesn't have to just use playing cards. And the, the general thing behind it uh, is that whenever I open the flap and I hand it to someone, they can do the rest. So uh, the way you hand the envelope to the spectator teaches them how to use the envelope without teaching them or forcing them to use it a certain way. And when they look inside, they're going to find only the out that you want them to. So that's uh, what it is. Um, does that make sense, Luke? <laughs> yeah, dude, hundred percent. I, I know that there's also more that we can do with this and we'll talk more about that, but um, yep, hundred percent. And I think that's a very important thing to note is that once you open that, they're the ones that can reach inside take out the object, they'll be able to see that there's nothing else in there, and then you're you know, on your way. That, to me, is one of the best yeah. parts about this, because they get to take yeah. the object out. Um, and I don't want to like uh, overhype that principle or um, lie to anybody. Like You definitely should not say, oh, is that the only thing in that envelope? Can you check all of the other sides? Uh, really make sure that's an empty envelope. Yeah. Uh, but if you're doing the right trick, all of the heat and attention should be on whatever they just removed. Yeah. Um, so that's why I've never had anybody discover the other pockets in the envelope. Cool. Uh, and I did see yeah. some questions floating around about that. I've kept cool. an eye on the, the YouTube stuff and uh, the Magic Cafe. And uh, there were some people saying stuff like that. But again, I think what it comes down to is to us as magicians, you know, if, 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 we're not, if we're not being chased, why are we running? You know, like, right. oh, is there anything else in the envelope? Why don't you check the envelope? Is it, you know, like if you're not throwing out these little things here, they're not going to think to go on that path. You know what I mean? Yep, totally. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, I'm a gimmick guy. I feel like yeah. people know that about me. And I'm always obsessed with using gimmicks in very clever ways to try to, you know, a script a routine or design a premise for an effect to where the uh, the gimmick just disappears. So, yeah, this is a great video. This is just showing uh, how easily you can open the envelope mm -hmm. and also uh, like uh, that you don't have to just use playing cards. The shape was designed for close up performers um, just so that it holds playing cards. Um, but it also holds bills, it holds receipts, it holds uh, like little index cards folded in half. Mm -hmm. So really, if you can think of something to go in there, it, it works. I will say the only thing that really doesn't work uh, just out of the you know, mechanics of how the gimmick is built is credit cards, just because they're really stiff. And you, um, one of the most deceptive parts about the envelope is what the envelope is made out of is a special type of Tyvek. So it's tear-proof, waterproof. Um, it's really durable. You can't really make this out of paper, and it lasts more than one or two performances. And also, paper would make this really thick. Um, oh, yeah. So that's what's really nice about it. 
Yep, and I am glad that you touched on, because I know we were going to talk about it, the fact that this is made out of Tyvek. So uh, the durability is definitely there because obviously uh, this is something you're going to open and close and you're going to use a lot. Uh, and Tyvek yep. is basically, you can't tear it, rip it. I mean, it's just, it's made to last. So. Yeah, and I, I love Tyvek. I carried a Tyvek wallet for a really long time uh, in <laughs> college and Tyvek ages really well. Uh, in your pocket. And that's what I really like about it as well for this gimmick, like the one I carried for a really long time and different versions. I never stopped carrying that version when I was creating it because it wore out. I stopped carrying it because I had a new idea for how to make it better. Cool. Um, also, I want to let the guys know that are watching, I am keeping an eye on your questions. So if you have any more, keep them coming. We're going to start to get to those. Just want to get some of the basic questions you know out of the way for you guys before we jump into more details um awesome so, yeah uh we'll jump to a couple here and i want to go back instead of just jumping to the last ones um uh here's one from our buddy nigel nigel's here every week he's one of the good guys nigel cool. says uh hey luke blake um very neat does it require any arts and crafts can we make our own in different colors so let's talk about the diy stuff that goes on out there these days is there any of that that you have to do to make this work uh, no diy required your uh this is actually one of the easiest things i've ever put out uh, as far as technical skills go the the technique for opening the envelope is uh you pinch and then you uh, open. That's it. Cool. Uh, what's nice about the, the pinch, that might seem stupid, but the dimensions of the envelope were designed so that that is possible, so that you kind of can look in to make sure cool. you're correct with your right out um, and then showing it. Um, as far as being able to make your own, I don't teach that. I don't teach how to make it, um, but... I mean, if you really wanted to ruin one by taking it apart, you might be able to figure out how it's made, just being a overshare, overshare here. But uh, honestly, I don't, I haven't found a material that works other than Tyvek mm -hmm. just for the um, thinness factor, which is a big one. Um, opacity is very important so that you don't see all of the stuff going on in yep. the envelope. If you find a paper that's thin enough, then you can see through it. So black Tyvek uh, actually solved a lot of different problems. And there's there's the outs. I don't recommend ever using the envelope like that photo, um, <laughs> but uh, you know maybe that's what you want to do. But that's you know you can see what's going on here. Um, that's the the different orientations and the size you have uh, going on. Cool. Um, pretty basic question, but it's a good one from uh, Michael King. Uh, he wants to know how many do you get in the package? Because of course this is being sold here. What do you get when you purchase the number four envelope? Yeah, you get one. I put a lot of thought into that. Um, because, you know, originally when I was making them out of paper, this was not uh, a super practical, long lasting product. Right. And that's one thing, like when I invent these products, they're, they're not products. They're, I'm inventing them because I want them. Sure. And then uh, once I've used them for a really long time and I think it would be cool to see what other people come up with, then they get released. And this is definitely the perfect example of that. But um, I, you only need one to do the trick, uh, to do a lot of the, the material. But with that question in mind, uh, you can order way more than one. Because uh, not to be like a salesman, but just to be like a, a creative idea sparker. But if you have another way of concealing two of these, now you have eight outs. Um, one thing to keep in mind is I really like that the spectator can remove the card. Mm -hmm. But if you yourself want to remove it very fairly and you use double facers, mm -hmm. uh, now you have uh, eight outs in the envelope and if you use two of these envelopes if you buy two now you have 16. Yeah. it doesn't take very many of these to do a 52 out situation yeah that's a good point yeah, yeah. throw in a few double facers in that yeah you got yeah you can carry that around in no time that'll be easy yeah 
Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a double facer uh, playing card. If you have uh, little folded up pieces of paper oh, yeah. that you've written different things on each side, you can do the accomplish the same thing and have eight outs in the envelope. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's jump to a specific question. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, P A uh, T Z Y. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, are the closed sides really closed good enough? that no one could accidentally see something because obviously you're opening the envelope, having them open it. How secure do you feel with the envelope that they're not going to feel or, you know, that those other sides will open, I guess is the question. <laughs> yep. Great question. Yeah. Um, whenever the envelope is closed, I mean, it's made like the dimensions and the craftsmanship on these is really high. So, I mean, you can kind of see it, yourself it's designed to just look like the creases and folds yep. on an envelope um but the best chance you ever have of accidentally seeing like you said uh are they really closed but no one would accidentally see something it, the best chance you have of accidentally ever seeing something is when they're all closed okay what's great about this design and complete accident i cannot take credit for this but whenever you open the envelope by opening one side you are making all of the other sides so much more tightly closed. Um, and so the moment that you're handing this envelope to the spectator is the moment when uh, the envelope is actually most examinable. Um, and so there's nothing for them to see or catch or find. The other thing that a lot of effort went into was how deep to make these tabs. And the reason why they're this depth is let's say I'm not using this out. Uh, the playing card is actually being held under that flap. Uh, cool. So if that makes sense. So there's no chance of anything falling out and there's no chance of, even if they look at the edge, there's no chance of them seeing anything but black. So it just looks like the edge of an envelope, which was on purpose. Wait, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you always think stuff through and then you think it through again and you, you just seem to always, cover all the little details. I mean, you've got a reputation of just having really, really solid and good uh, magic, not just for yourself to use, Thanks, but when you man. release it, you know, people actually use the stuff, which I think says a lot these days. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I like this. I like this also for the fact that like, it's, it is a utility device. So yeah. there are three fully thought out routines that I like to use it for on there. So you don't have to come up with anything if you don't want to, but it is like, a really fun thing to jam on creatively. And those are, like you mentioned, those are covered on the instructional. You do learn some routines with it too. Yep. On the instructional, I talk you through three routines, like a, a princess card trick mm -hmm. uh, where you show five cards and then uh, you turn them into four different cards. So whichever one uh, or four cards into three cards, sorry. So that any of the four that they think of can end up in the envelope um, one of my other favorite ones, uh, is that I teach is here. Can I show you this one, Luke? Uh, this yeah, that'd be great, one. man. I wasn't going to ask, but if you want to throw some down, I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. All <laughs> right. So I have this, these four Kings here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Luke, I have this envelope. Uh, which King would you like me to try this with? It's totally up to you. Uh, let's go with the King of clubs. Let's go with that one. King of Clubs. Okay. And if you could just hold out your hand through the screen, I just want you to hold on to this envelope. <laughs> I'm working on it. All so, right. There we go. <laughs> perfect. So you're holding that envelope. And uh, here we go. So we've got all of these kings here. And you wanted me to try this with uh, the King of Clubs. So let's see if this will work. Okay. So I put the King of Clubs in here. And we just give it a flip and a snap. And now that king <laughs> has completely vanished. And if you open the envelope yourself and you check it out, you will find that wow. that card has gone into the envelope. Right. And uh, then I can take these and put them in here and put that away. Wait. So it's kind of fun. That one's on there. It's a real simple, quick one. But I like a lot of times when I do like walk around events, quick, fast, in their hands magic. Yep. You get it. In the hands is some of the strongest stuff that you could do. I know I'm preaching to the yeah. choir here. But yeah. And then the third one is just like a, you know, I put random objects that you'd find in your envelope, or you'd find in your envelope. I put random objects that you would find in uh, my wallet. 
Uh, the other thing is like I carry this bifold wallet, uh, ungimmick wallet, but I carry a lot of magic in it. And this uh, envelope was designed to kind of fit perfectly into the uh, into most wallets or purses. Um, so I say like, you know, uh, a quick organic use for the envelope is I've been carrying this envelope and uh lately and i just keep one thing in it instead of my wallet but i want you to guess what it is do you think i carry my cash my receipts uh my to-do list or um uh, there was one more thing on there or my id or something like that and then they they name anything they want and then that's what you showed them that that's what you carry in your in your uh envelope so and then at the end of the video i do say that um, I talked for like five or 10 minutes of just idea sparkers for what you can use it for. And sometimes those, those are my favorite parts of magic downloads. Awesome, dude. Uh, we've also yeah. got some people here that have already been using this, I believe because, oh, cool. um, slow-mo says, thanks for yep. playing my clip on your story, Blake. So it sounds like people are already. Oh no, he, he yeah. was great. The other night he posted a really funny video of a, a different product I have oh. on, on my shop. Got it. And okay. uh, I reposted it because it was really funny. I love whenever I see other people perform uh, stuff I've released. Cool. Um, it's really cool to see that. And this is definitely one of them because the envelope is such a utility device. Like, uh, I mean, I've thought of a lot of uses for it, but I know that people are going to think of 10 times cooler things than I can. So that's what I'm excited to you know, selfishly see what people post videos of of the thing because it'll help spark new ideas in my mind with it. Absolutely. So when you guys do that, make sure that you you tag Blake. Obviously, what's your Instagram name? Why don't we get that out of the way too so people can find you? Sweet. My Instagram is Blake Voigt. It was not taken. So. Right there, Blake Voigt. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Um, there was a, another question here about... Um, Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. So people were asking, um, is it marked to help keep track of your outs? So uh, why don't we talk about that? Because of the orientation here, um, how do they know? Great question. Which way to open the envelope? Let's jump into that. Good question, Michael. Great question. Uh, the so to answer the questions in order, is it marked? No, mm -hmm. it is not. I did not want to mark them. In case you had an idea or if you have a personal favorite way of marking things, um, but if you want to mark it the way I mark it, I will teach you right now how I mark it. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, maybe you can't even see this, but there is a small black dot. Can you see that, Luke? Uh, right, right in the middle. Okay. Uh, right at the top here. If you were here in person, it's clear as day. I can see it. I, in order to, I saw it when you just hit order, it in the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whenever I'm looking at it, I see I can't not see it. Uh, a spectator would not see it. And it takes about one second to uh, <laughs> mark it. <laughs> so uh, I mark cool. it that way uh, just so that, A, I know what side it is, and then it's on one side. So I place that in my hand and then I do like a clockwise uh, system. But, you know, in, in creating new routines, if you have four outs, I mean, four is not that many to remember, but if you, for some reason, uh, are hesitant or get nervous when you perform, that is what's nice about the peak principle yep. because you kind of like get to look in for one last check as you're opening the tab before you hand it to them uh, in order to like re realize, oh crap, that's the wrong one. And then maybe talk to them for a few seconds before you reopen the envelope. All right, getting all those deets. I'm also keeping an eye on the questions coming in here. Awesome. Uh, this is great awesome. to, uh, to get all this stuff, you know, out in the open. That's what people want. You know, they want to know totally more about uh, this stuff. This is actually a good question from Ellis. Uh, this is a good one. And by the way, guys, if you're just joining us, you can see above, we're talking about the number four envelope. This is a great way to do multiple outs, a great device to use, but it's also a good way to do switching. And we'll talk more about that in a second because we haven't really talked oh, yeah. about the switching. Uh, Ellis would like to know, can you feel the presence of the other cards? Because again, you open the envelope, 
You hand it to them, they open the envelope and reach in, well, not to open it, but to reach inside once you've opened it. Have you ever worried or have you ever had any problems with people feeling the other stuff in the envelopes? In the envelope. Great question. Yeah. Great question. Uh, that was what took so long as far as the materials used Got it. Uh, for this thing. Because, yes, if you use most types of paper, not, not even as much as uh, you feel other things in the envelope. But mm -hmm. before you do that, you realize, like, this is a thick envelope. <laughs> this, is like, this is really thick. I can barely get it open. Um, and what's nice is this Tyvek is, like, almost tissue paper thin so that what's giving the envelope the feeling that it feels like an envelope are the three remaining outs, which is really nice. Um, and then the tabs are a little thickened so that the overall feel of the envelope, whenever one out is removed, is that of a normal envelope. Cool. Um, if you, that's the one thing I said, you can't use credit cards or um, like uh, a hotel room key, like that credit card ID thickness, um, you can maybe use one of those. That's mm -hmm. why I've used my ID before as an out when the other three outs are really thin. Um, but as far as using four of those, yes, you would feel the thickness. Uh, but with playing cards, uh, no, you cannot. I've tried using two playing cards in this before, in each one, and that gets too thick as well. Okay. So if you want to use two outs, I would recommend uh, the double facers, which still flies, which is nice. Cool. All right. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> um, this is a good question. Uh, Slomo, the guy we were just talking about, he wants to know, uh, is there or maybe will there be a stage version? Because I know you've been making some of your gimmicks now more bigger size, like a, a bigger version. Is there any plan to do that with, with this? Yes. Sweet. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I mean, so this is this is it. This is the this oh, wow. is the stage. Um, this oh. is uh, I've been making these two. Uh, I'm currently selling those on my shop right now, um, but uh, you know, getting to be able to sell the big ones on a bigger scale would be great. But this the same same thing, same concept. This is just uh, designed to hold a jumbo card. Cool. Um, and uh, all I would say is that just keep your eyes out for uh, stuff like that from me because the goal is um, to get everybody to buy these and then um, give you something that you could put these into <laughs> if you wanted um, to have even more outs. You know, hmm. uh, but you would need to buy a bunch of these. So, uh, which is good marketing wise, but also like if you're, if you're smart and thinking ahead about like how outs work, you know, multiple outs put into multiple outs, put into multiple outs equals really impossible crap. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, also I did my answer a question. I forget who it was from right now. Someone was asking about the price on the, uh, the number four envelopes. Uh, they are uh, twenty nine ninety five, so about thirty bucks there. Um, and again, you receive the envelope. Uh, it is made out of Tyvek, which I think is important to note. Made to last, but also you receive a few different routines to go along with the envelope, so that you can start to uh, pick out your favorites and make up your own. So, yeah, exactly. There you go. All right. Um, oh yeah, Nigel was asking, do you have any plans, or does there exist? a Facebook group for the envelope. Do you have any Facebook groups, uh, secret groups for any of the products uh, or this one specifically that you've created? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do that right after this call. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <then. laughs> uh, well, uh, specifically for, thank you, Nigel, uh, specifically for these more utility item uh, devices. Cool. I think that's a really great idea. So, uh, follow me on social media and, um, I'll make sure that Murphy's and Luke is, are made aware of it as well, because that's a great resource and that's a great idea. I love a few groups that I, I belong to for other products. So well, well, I'll definitely make that happen. Yeah. It's a great thing. You know, we can, we can, uh, all kind of meet up together and talk shop and do it in a way that we're not talking to the world. So it's, it's pretty cool. Totally. Really smart. Yeah. Now knowing Blake though, he'll have like 
multiple groups at the same time. He'll have multiple out groups. So if you're in one, <laughs> you may not be in the other one. Or, uh, you have to you have to jump across to the other one. Yeah, <laughs> or the other side of the other one. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, another uh, fellow gimmick guy. This guy is known for making very clever gimmicks. Benny Chickering is uh, hanging out with us. Um, awesome. Benny, would like to know: Was this created out of a need? Because I know sometimes as creators we kind of create stuff out of necessity. Or was this like a eureka kind of moment, like a light bulb moment where you're like, whoa, hold on a second. Like, where did this kind yeah. of come from? Yeah. It was both. Okay. Um, yeah. A need, I mean, I just love building multiple outs into things because I'm obsessed with origami and paper. So from a builder's problem solving standpoint, I love solving those problems. And then from a performer standpoint, I love, whenever a device gives me the freedom to perform something more fairly. So uh, both kind of happened. Uh, I'd worked with um, Martin Lewis's multiple outs envelope uh, on his uh, magic uh, DVD he teaches how to make, and I love them, and I've made other versions before. There was... uh, to answer Benny's question more fully, there was at one point a routine I had that specifically needed four outs. And so that probably started me down the path um, because I was like, how can I hide four different things? And, and I never dreamed I would be able to come up with a way that the spectator could remove the thing. Because the original goal was to have four pockets that I could access because what I was removing was definitely gimmick. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then just slowly tweaking it over the years and over time, the, the Eureka moment was the concept of all four sides closed. And then whenever one side gets opened, you can just hand it to them. And, uh, that was a separate Eureka moment because I was excited that I could open it. And then I realized, Oh crap. I'm, I'm like pretty sure that you can just hand this to somebody now. And then after tons and tons of testing and no one ever catching me with it, that's not lying about that. Uh, I would tell you, I'm sure, you know, it'd be like, well, there was this one time, but, um, <laughs> no one's ever caught me with it. And, uh, that's how I confidently would advertise that aspect of the principle. Sweet. All right. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I've seen Blake. I, I've seen the videos of him performing. I've seen, and you check out you know his stuff on YouTube. You can see him doing a lot of like magic. I mentioned this earlier for celebrities and at big events. Um, he's using this stuff. And again, I, I try to make sure that I. I don't want to over mention it, but I definitely want to mention it that as magicians, it's so refreshing when you have someone that's releasing material, but they're also like out there using it or they're creating it to use it and then they're sharing it with the rest of us. So um, I don't know if this one's specifically out there, but there's a lot of performance clips of Blake out there. Um, I've watched some myself and he's just, he's one of the best. I gotta tell you, he's, he's out there. He's Thanks, crushing dude. it. Um, I got Thanks, to meet man. Blake when uh, you were here working with Copperfield. Um, yeah. And you and the whole crew, so. Um, that was a long time ago. I just realized the other day I was doing the math on when that was. I know. It was like, it's yeah. crazy. It feels like last year. <laughs> Dude, I, I've been in Vegas now for 11 years. I can't believe it. I trust me. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Um, let's jump to one more question. And then, because we are pretty much at the half an hour mark, I promised I would let you go. Um, this is a good one, though. Um, as a creator, this isn't specific to the envelope that we're talking about here, the number four envelope. Uh, Michael Pilkey, though, um, let's, let's get into the creative mind of Blake Boyd a little bit more. He says, can you give any examples of issues you had when developing this? But let's not talk necessarily about this. He wants to know more about, like, overcoming obstacles when you're creating or designing new stuff. Let's make it more generic. As a creator, when you get to those points where you have a block, do you have any uh, advice you could give with people to get over the hump, you know, when it comes to creative blocks or developing methods that aren't necessarily going the way that you want them to? Yeah. Um, I like tackling the same problem from as many different directions as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that that usually yields better results. Um, this envelope was not created 
uh, by trying to create a four out envelope. Mm-hmm. This, uh, you know, if, if I wanted to display four outs, I would first try to build the outs into the thing, then try to build them into the thing that holds the thing, mm-hmm. um, then try to do it with skill, then try to do it uh, with scripting and patter and psycho- psychology. So I think what I like to do when, when ta- like I, I like tackling premises or concepts uh, more than I like inventing gimmicks, even though I've kind of released a lot of gimmicks there's not a single gimmick I've ever released that was created because I was trying to invent that gimmick. <laughs> um, yeah. I, they, they all came from me trying to perform a trick. And I think that's a, a big difference between some of the stuff I put out and other people put out. There are amazing, brilliant creators who just create. Um, but I'm, I'm creating these things with the in, uh, means to an end of like wanting to perform it. And so uh, to answer his question, like with the envelope or with any trick, if, if the gimmick is not doing exactly what I want it to, then I will try to solve the problem with my performance. And then if that doesn't do it, um, and then the other sad truth is a lot of times it just doesn't get solved right away. I think, uh, I started working on this in 2012 Oh, wow. So, like, the idea of a multiple outs envelope uh-huh. was 2012. And I did a version for a while, and then I put it away, and then it gets put in the back of the, the journal. And then uh, I go back and reread my journals um, to try and see if a new perspective on an old idea that I was blocked on might come up. And that's kind of what re-sparked the envelope was uh, just the new – new ideas on it after not working on it for a few months. That's something I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned as well that we can start to end on is that so many people these days are in a rush to invent something to put it out, whether it's for the quote unquote fame that comes with it, you know what I'm talking about, or yeah. the money that comes with it. You know, it's kind of one of those two normally. Um, yeah. But you're getting it from one of the best in the business that he's been working on this specifically for the last seven years, pretty much seven years now. <laughs> Um, on and off yeah but yeah. yeah but i mean still you're not yeah. just you don't just have a half-baked idea a half-assed thing and you're going ah, this is cool here let me just throw it out on the market like yeah you, you put the time in and i think that's something that more people should hear as we go now forward, I, is the, I do though to counter that i do perform half-baked ideas all the time well that's different so that's different. Yeah, yeah yeah but but in order to get them to this level I do think you do have to become comfortable with performing ideas that might not work. Yes. Uh, but then once they work all the time and they're good and you want other people to do them, that's when I think you should put them out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the only way yeah. to find out if something works is to perform it and to use it. Yeah. And I'm sure there's yeah. some good stories about that that have not gone the way you want them to, but we'll do that another time. We'll get to those. Again. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, and then just, I know we're at the end here, but just, sure. Just to touch on the switching thing really quick, oh, yeah. that was a good yeah. a good idea. Um, because of the orientation of the envelope, the, there were thoughts about making it square at one point, so each out is the same. Um, but I think a, a rectangular envelope was the way to go for sure. And uh, the thing that you can use this for switching-wise is two of the outs look the exact same. Mm-hmm. So that's why this can be a switching device. So if I opened this out on this side and I said, uh, let me borrow a $1 bill, uh, tear the corner off, put the bill in the envelope, uh, I'm going to seal it. Actually, here, hold out your hand, and I'm going to have you hold on to the envelope and keep a hold of the bill. Now you can make the corner up here somewhere crazy and then say, take it out of the envelope. Does it still match? And uh, you've switched one side for the other. Cool. You're not you're really using all four sides, but it's a very deceptive switching device, too, because they can open it, which is the key. Yep. I'm so glad you uh, remind you. You reeled me back in from the, the switch. We slipped it in. The best stuff's always at the end of the video. Hey, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's great. And again, guys, if you're just joining us, I, I want to repeat this one more time. This is made out of Tyvek. That's one of the concerns that yeah. I want there to not be. You know, this isn't made out of paper. It's not going to, you know, break down on you. It's, of course, anything's going to have wear and tear, but 
Tyvex made the laugh, and that's what these are made out of. So, yeah, you can put this thing through the. Uh, you can have it in your pocket and run it through the dish, like the dishwasher, the uh, <laughs> washing machine. Yep. And uh, it will still work. You just have to dry it out. I, I really, I literally took one of these ones and ran it under the sink. Oh wow! And then let it air dry, and it was fine. So it doesn't wrinkle or ripple or anything. It's really crazy. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but I tested it just so that I could confidently say cool. it's waterproof. Because I was curious, and it is. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we don't we don't stand by what happens to you if you decide to run water or put in a whether it's a dishwasher or your <laughs> in the uh, you know the washer. Yeah, clothes. don't put it in your in your pants in the dishwasher. I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blake. I'm gonna let you run, my friend. Thank you so much for going over everything with us. You know, uh, answering yeah, all these man. questions. Thanks, Luke. What's that? This is awesome. I said thank you. This is perfect. This is fun. Dude, it's great. I hope that I uh, hope we're able to do this again sometime in the near future. I know that you're always up to something, um, but I also know you're also very busy. So it's also nice to uh, get a few moments here with you. So thanks for this. And if you guys have any other questions, you can always post them in the comments. If you couldn't join us live, we're here keeping an eye on those too. But right now, Blake Boyd, I will catch you next time, my friend. Thanks, Luke. See you guys. See you, man.